The land is ready, and after months of patient and thorough research, we're excited to embark on a new journey and add a new skill to our homesteading life. I've been looking forward to this chapter for so long, and today I'll share what it has taken to bring our new animals home. In December, Mike injured his ankle and he needed surgery. I started to feel anxious about this project, uncertain we would make it happen in time. So what do we do now? How will we ever be ready for these animals to arrive? God has a way of bringing people into your life just when you need them the most. We're incredibly fortunate to have amazing friends and family who generously sacrifice time on their own farms to come and help us in the most incredible way. We can't raise livestock without shelter, and this was my main concern. My cousin Angela and her husband Chad drew up the plans and gathered all the supplies for us. Aaron and Colby, two great friends that I actually met at an MI Gardener event, they also came to help. They have a YouTube channel called Bag 40 Acre, and I'll leave the link below. My son, he also gave up his weekend to help, and he was amazing. The cost of materials is high. We did consider buying a shed, but it would have been double the price of building one ourselves. Even so, I'm shocked at how expensive materials are, and I often wonder how farmers manage it. The cost of trying to homestead is almost too expensive to handle these days. A lot of thought went into designing our shed. First we had to determine the size of our herd. If goat math is anything like chicken math, we might be in trouble. The size of our herd dictates the size of the shed that we need. We opted for higher ceiling to accommodate shelving for hay and other supplies. Now that the goat shed is partially finished, we have to ramp up our cleaning, clearing, and fence installation. Once again, friends and family gave up their weekend to come and help. Yes, yeah, I will. Everything I've read about goats mentions what great escape artists they are. Nigerian dwarf goats are very small, so we chose a four-foot woven wire for sheep and goats. This is durable enough that they can't climb it, and I feel confident it will hold up, but I guess only time is gonna tell. We were all very tired, but we still found time for a good laugh. Doll arms attached to a coat hanger made for a Boy, hilarious so moment when the chickens got involved. <laughs> Can I just say I hate to paint, and the only thing I hate more is staining. I hate to say hate, but this was not a fun job. Our first coat wasn't perfect, and I'm thinking that we need a second coat, but this is going to have to do for now. It's sealed, it's protected, and it'll, it'll do its job for the time being. Finished assembling the uh, goat gate. We're now going to. Uh, We're going to see. Pass community. or fail. <laughs> we can edit this out. <laughs> it works. <laughs> Hey, Presto. This project really pushed us out of our comfort zone. Mike persevered, but it took a few attempts to get this gate right. It's all about angles of math, but we got it done. Well, Mike got it done.
That's the last time that will be empty. The shelter is secure and the fence and gate are in place. We are ready to house the goats, but we still need to source hay, which isn't easy this time of year. From what I've read, a second cutting of timothy or orchard grass is ideal. I found a farm that had what we needed, but at a very premium price. So I'll be looking around more this summer to secure hay for the winter. It's amazing how confusing even the simplest things can be when you're new to it. I can talk all day about chickens and gardening, even canning, but I struggle with even figuring out a water bucket or hay manger for the goats. They need free choice minerals and bedding. What kind of bedding? We finally went with pine shavings because they smell nice and we've had bad luck with straw because straw tends to carry mites. It's a lesson we learn with our chickens and scaly leg mites. Oh, you know what, so what? That's good enough for now. We'll figure something out later. Honey, we need, we need a truck. We do need a truck, darling. Especially <laughs> when we get sheep. <laughs> and pigs. And, pigs. and bees. And bees. And horses and donkeys. <laughs> Three months later, after the day I put the deposit down, the day has arrived. We're on our way to bring our new babies home. I knew it would be stressful for the girls, but I had no idea just how stressful. We're taking them away from everything they've ever known. I know they're just animals, but I can't help feeling this way. The consolation is that we will take very good care of them and give them the best life we can. As small as this goat is, she's surprisingly strong. I had no idea they were so powerful. Liliana, or Lily, is one year old. We chose an older doe so that we could breed her this fall. Clarabelle, or Clara, she's four months old, and we won't breed her until next year. We're still deciding whether or not to get a weather for them. I think they would be happier with three goats instead of two. The weather is also four months old and Clarabelle's brother. If you didn't know, a weather is a castrated male. We couldn't have done this without the incredible support of our friends and family. Your encouragement and help have made all the difference. Thank you for joining us on this adventure. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any updates. We're excited to share more about our homesteading journey and the new skills we're learning along the way. Stay curious, keep learning, and cherish every moment on your own homesteading journey. See you next time.